Hello. Welcome to District Dialogue. I am Tarinia Carthen, Vice Chair of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and your District 3 Commissioner. And today on District Dialogue, we have two very special guests. We have Ms. Brenda Grissom. She is the founder of Gertrude's House. And we also have with us Ms. Gloria Hathcock, a breast cancer survivor. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we want to ensure that all of Douglas County is here in the fight with us as we celebrate and we make aware breast cancer survivors. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. You're so welcome. Thank you for the inv invitation. No, listen, <laughs> um, when Tabria and I talked about what I would do for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is really personal to me because I've had several family members who have battled breast cancer, right? Including yes. my mother who passed away at the age of 46 from breast cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, it runs pervasively through my family. Mm -hmm. And I, for one, have had to deal with it. And uh, without a doubt, you know, it is very personal. But it's also a topic that I want people to understand that even if you're diagnosed with it or someone's close diagnosed with it, there are options. You have resources. You have support systems. Mm -hmm. You have a place where you are not alone. Yes. So it's no longer a, a secret anymore, right? It's right. something that I think we all should be able to share, talk about openly, and gain the support that we need. And that's what Gertrude's House does. Can you share a little bit about your organization? Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, Gertrude's House started uh, six years ago. And... Um, I started it because there were several times that one survivor reached out for a ride to another organization, a big one, and could, get, could not get a ride. And she had been diagnosed three times, and all three times she couldn't get a ride. And I always wanted to do it here in Georgia because I'm from California and I had a nonprofit in California. But I wanted to do it here and I just kept procrastinating. But with this particular woman, her name was Wendy Kitchen, she's gone on. Gone on. But Wendy couldn't get a ride, and after that battle with her and that organization, calling them, uh, she called them, uh, each diagnosis and could not get a ride, and then I took over the last diagnosis and I called them 18 times and could not get a ride. And after that last one, I asked the lady, am I being recorded? And she said yes. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I asked her, um, you know, you guys provide rides, but this lady, I have personally called 18 times and couldn't get her a ride. And uh, she said, well, did she get a ride? And I said, yes. And she said, well, she got there, didn't she? And at that point, I decided that I got to do something. So that's when it started officially in, in Georgia. Got you. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you say she needed a ride, explain to those who may be watching, a ride to what? A ride to and how significant is a ride? Okay, thank you. Um, this particular lady, she had lost her job mm -hmm. because of going to treatment. Mm -hmm. They just let her go because she had too many uh, doctor's appointments. So she lost her job, and when she lost her job, she lost her house and her car. So she needed rides to her treatment. So that's what we did. We provided her rides to her treatment. Wow. Yes. Something as simple as just getting a ride to a doctor's appointment. Stressful. Mm -hmm. Which should not be, right? It should because not be. Because you've already been diagnosed with it. Yes. There's so many emotions <coughs> yeah. right, running mm -hmm. through you. The least of them should be, how can I get to where I need to be to, That's right. to get treatment? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. Thank you for that. That's yes, um, a big one. Ms. Gloria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi. 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 Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. You're wearing pink. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that pink is the official color for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes, it right? is. Mm -hmm. And we know pink symbolizes girl, right? Yes. Um, but we're tough girls, aren't we? Yes, we are. Tell us how you became a tough girl. Um, it actually happened in 2004. Mm -hmm. I was... It runs in my family, so I've always done, you know, self-examinations, which are very, very, very important. important. Um, and I noticed that I had a knot that had not been there the month before. So I kind of watched it for another month or so, and it continued to grow. At that point, you know, I went to my doctor, and 
they biopsied it and it came back as breast cancer. Uh, the next week I was back in surgery having it removed. Um, and, you know, went to my oncologist from there and started my treatment. And I did six months of uh, radiation. I did six weeks, no, six weeks of radiation, sorry, and six months of chemo. At that point, um, they had done all the tests and my markers were back normal and they told me I was cancer free. And, you know, she told me, she said, I can't guarantee that it won't come back. But she said, you know, maybe, you know, you might be one of the lucky ones. Well, I went 15 years before it came back again in 2020. I noticed another knot. And at that point, I didn't wait too long. <laughs> I called my oncologist again. She got me, of course, and the pandemic was going on. So, you know, it was a little harder to get into places. But I had my, um, I had my, my mammogram, and they did a, a sonogram on it. And he told me then that, you know, there was something there, a mass. Mm -hmm. And I found out then that my breast cancer had returned. Okay. So. so between the first time and the second time was mm. a 15 year span. 15 year span. 15 year span. Yes. Do you mind me asking, at what age were you when you were first diagnosed? 33. Wow. Yeah, very young. Very young. Yes. Very young. For most now, that's wow. childbearing years. <coughs> yes, right? it was. Yeah. Um, I winded up actually getting a partial hysterectomy at that time. Oh, wow. Because um, mom was estrogen fed or estrogen based, as mm -hmm. they call it. Mm -hmm. So to get rid of some of my estrogen. I had a partial hysterectomy done at that point. Wow, wow. So you, you are tougher than most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> and, and at 33, most young women, again, that's childbearing years, mm -hmm. most young women are trying to figure out their careers, you know. Yes. So many things going on. You're mm -hmm. still, you know, I don't want to say you were in the club, but you were club worthy. Yes, I right. was. I was very. You know, you, you, you know, you. That's the prime of your life. Yes, it and was. So, it was very shocking. Right. It was not what I expected at thirty. At that call, right. when they got got that call, I did not right. expect that at all. Right. When you got that call, did you know anyone else in your family who had dealt with breast cancer? Yes. Um, my aunt. Mm. She was very young. Mm -hmm. Um, she was in her forties. Um, she winded up having to get a double mastectomy at that point. And she, she lived on to be 50, mm -hmm. and then it came back. Hers came back again too, and she lost a battle with that one. Mm -hmm. But um, my, great, my grandmother also had it, mm -hmm. but she had it more along the 60, or about 60, 63, when she mm -hmm. discovered hers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back in those days, there was not a lot of treatments so she lived like a year and then she lost her battle so it runs in my family right. too <laughs> right right and the fact that you were able to identify that it ran in your family and mm -hmm. that you knew people in your family that had battled it yes you kind of knew what to look for and that you yourself yeah. needed to be checking because even at 33 I don't think most of us think about doing breast self exams because we're just not thinking mm -hmm. about our breast in that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So this is this is eye opening, and this is why we do these types of events and programs, right? It's, it's yes. why Gertrude's House exists. Mm -hmm. It's yes. why Breast Cancer Awareness Month is prevalent, right? Because we want people, young, old, middle age to understand that breast cancer can hit you at any at age. any age, yes. And it is so important to ensure that you are self-aware mm -hmm. yes. of your body, right, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. family history, mm -hmm. right, and yeah. that you just talk to some girls, like yeah. we're doing right now, yeah. that, you just, that you just talk about things, yeah. and that you're open, and you feel like you know, you're in a safe space to do so, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I, I, I want to continue to talk about that a little bit more. Miss Brenda, about how important it is for women to do self breast examinations, and I know you know yeah. you you are uh, you know a proponent for that. Every opportunity you get, you show women how to do it and, and what they should be doing. So as soon as we come back from this short commercial break, I wanna I wanna delve into that. I, I want you to talk about the importance of it. You know 
show women how to do it. Okay. And then, um, and we'll take it from there. So um, if you'll stay tuned, more to come with District Dialogue, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Hi, welcome back to this edition of District Dialogue. Again, we are celebrating Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and my guests are Ms. Brenda Gresham, the founder of Gertrude's House, and Ms. Gloria Hathcock, a survivor of breast cancer. Um, my two amazing guests have already given you a segment that is worthy <laughs> of you staying tuned. So continue. We're gonna talk now about how do you examine yourself? when to examine yourself and what to do if you examine yourself and find that there's something there that just doesn't quite feel right. Ms. Brenda, we know you are a breast cancer survivor, not once, not twice, but what? Three times. Three times, Three right? Times. So mm -hmm. you are a tough cookie, beautiful tough cookie. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, talk to us a little bit about what women should be doing and men, if mm -hmm. you know that breast cancer runs yes. in your family. Yes. So. Um, you should be doing your breast self-exams every single month. Um, they do tell you uh, at a certain point in your cycle, when you're having your cycle, to do breast exams. Mm -hmm. But I try to teach women to do it on their birthday. So my birthday is the 10th. I would do my breast exams every month on the 10th. And that way you know what your breasts feel like on the 10th of the month, about that same time every month. Mm -hmm. So you know what it feels like. Yes. yes. Okay. And, um, you want me, you want yeah, me to demonstrate? Like if you okay, demonstrate so, just a little so that um, people the, who are okay. watching, you know, because I'm pretty sure there are some women out there who don't, don't know, no. who, who hear people say, well, self breast exam, and they're like, yeah, but what, what am I doing, right? So. Yes. Okay, so, and the reason this is important to me is because my second breast cancer, I had had a mammogram. Within 30 days of that mammogram, I did my self exam and I found a lump. So that's why it's so important to me, not only that you get your mammogram, but you do your self exams every single month. Now, here, this is breast tissue. This is breast tissue all the way up under your arm. All of this area is breast tissue. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do, there's two techniques. Um, you take your three fingers, and for sake of demonstration, I'm gonna start here, but you wanna start underneath your arm. You take one hand, you put it behind your head, and you take those three fingers, and again, for demonstration, we're gonna do here. But you do a light, uh, a light rub, and then you go deeper, and then you go as deep as you can stand it. And then when you move from that position, you're gonna take that one finger and place it here. Because if you take that one finger and you skip all the way down here, then you miss this area and a lump could be there. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to skip over. You want to just go from one finger. So the movement will be very light, deeper, as deep as you can stand it, and then you move that finger. Light, deep, deeper, and then you move by one finger. And you're going to do this up and down, all the way down to about here. And, a, and the second way you can do it, instead of up and down, would be a circular motion. Now, the circular motion, to me, you would get lost in going around. So that's why I like the up and down technique. So again, you would go up and down, light, deep, deeper, one movement on the finger, because you don't want to skip over. Again, there could be a small lump under there. You also want to squeeze the nipple to see if any fluid comes out. If anything comes out, you want to go and get that checked. Mm -hmm. When you start your exam, you want to look in the mirror standing straight up. See if you see any changes in your breast. Then you want to move, bend over and look at your breast when you bend over to see if you see any changes in your breast. If you see anything that looks like the outer part of an orange, the, that ripply looking effect of an mm -hmm. orange, then you want to go and get that checked out because that could be something. If there's um, uh, raised areas in there, you want to get that checked out, because that could be checked out. Any change in your breast, you want to go and get checked out. Don't wait, you know, I'm going to look at this for a while and see if, it, you know, if there's something. No, make an appointment and go get it checked out. It's important mm -hmm. that you get it checked out. There. My sister was diagnosed every day. She, you know, you take a shower. My sister's in there taking a shower. She felt a lump the size of a lemon just popped up out of nowhere. 
She went and got that checked out. It went back down when it got it checked out. And in fact, it was breast cancer. So any change in your breast, you want to go and get that checked out because your professional doctor can tell you, you know, what's going on. You don't want to wait, you know, and you want to get checked out. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Great information. Again, Thank we you. don't know what we don't know. That's yes, why we, we have to know. share and we have to talk yes. about these mm -hmm. things. Um, you know, it may be a little scary. It may be uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but knowing your body will save your life. Yes. Knowing your body, being familiar with your body, because it's yours mm -hmm. and you only got one. That's right. <laughs> so you have to take care of it yeah. and you have to know it, right? So yes. get to know your body. It's, mm -hmm. it's a great thing, right? And it also will help you help doctors or physicians who are caring for you. Yes. Remember, they are practicing, right? But yes, you, exactly. you are the professional of you. You know yes. you backwards and forwards, yes. right? So you have to be your very best advocate and your first advocate. Mm -hmm. And knowing your body, again, every month, I was born July 15th, so on the 15th of every month, I check. Mm -hmm. Now, these are not mine because I had a double mastectomy, right? And I chose to put implants back in, right? But I still check. I still check under my arms. I still check to make sure if there are any changes, right? Because mm -hmm. I want to know me, right? Mm -hmm. even, even in this new form. So what you just said is so important. And if you don't have an OBGYN and you just have a general practitioner doctor, Go to, them, go to them, right, and, mm -hmm. and let them know, right? Yes. You have to reach out and don't yes. take no for an answer. When you feel something, you say something and you get to it as soon as possible mm -hmm. because time is of the essence. Yes. Would, you, would you not yes. say that? It is, yes, yeah. very yes. much so. Yeah, so thank you for that. May I make a comment on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. You, you said, uh, don't take no for an answer. Don't take no We an have answer. a man that's a part of our Gertrude's House group uh -huh. that's a breast cancer survivor. Uh -huh. And he was told three years over and over and over the change that he saw in his breast was nothing. Finally, his doctor took a look at it and it was breast cancer. Wow. So don't take no for an answer. Right. He just kept on pushing, kept pushing. And for three years, he was told, it, you're okay. It's nothing. Wow. Wow. So yes, you have to be your own advocate. You, mm -hmm. you must be, mm -hmm. you must be. Yes. So Ms. Gloria, talk to me a little bit about what it was like when you first got your diagnosis and what was the challenge during that time? What were the, some of the challenges that most people don't think about you know, when you are having to deal with that? You were young, again, mm -hmm. you had you know, your child, what, what were some of the challenges in being diagnosed that others may not think about, but they should? Yeah, because it, it was scary. Um, yeah. You know, I was very young. I had a daughter that was eight. I had a son that was five at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my first thing I thought of. Well, what about my children? You know, what yeah. is this going to do to me? Right. Am I going to survive? Are they going to not have me around? Think, you know, a lot of thoughts really go through your head. Right. And um, they were my biggest support group. Mm. Um, the doctors were very quick about getting me in with an oncologist. I mean, like next day, he had called me, he says, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. The surgeon that I seen, okay. he said, you're gonna go to your oncologist tomorrow mm -hmm. and you know, they're gonna get you set up. I had no insurance at the time. I was self, you know, I worked for myself. And um, he said, You'll, they'll get your insurance stuff taken care of. When I walked out of the room, I was on Medicaid, had an appointment for surgery to have the knot removed. Um, and it just happened so quickly, but it was, I was so glad that it did. Um, and then I couldn't work. Mm. That's the thing, you're, you're, you know, I started my chemo and stuff and I was very sick. I could not work. And I'm thinking, how am I going to support my children? How is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? Yeah, I'm like, and and that's that's something I think that uh, for for a lot of us, you know, women, we are the breadwinners, or we are a, a big part of bringing yes. bread into our homes. So I want to talk about that because that is one of the ways that you and Miss Brenda um, kind came of about. Met, kind yes, of, right. yes, yes, yeah. So hold that thought, and we will get the connection between you two as we return right after this brief pause for a commercial. 
Welcome back. I'm District 3 Commissioner Tarina Carthen, and you are tuned in to District Dialogue with Ms. Brenda Gresham of Gertrude's House and Ms. Gloria Hathcock, a breast cancer survivor. And we are talking about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, Ms. Gloria was just telling us about some of the challenges with being diagnosed with breast cancer. And she was a breadwinner in her family mm -hmm. and not being able to continue to work the way that she had done in the past really affected her family. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a challenge, right? Because you have people that depend on you. Mm -hmm. You do. And when breast cancer comes knocking at your door, mm -hmm. There are certain things that one you got to take care of mm -hmm. first and foremost exactly. your health you mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so you were saying that your your kids although they were young were such a great support they were right? but you were thinking about them how do I feed them how do I continue to give them and nurture them yeah. in a way that you know it, it was it was very hard it yeah. was and yeah. you know. <laughs> You don't think about it, you know, they have school that they start, you're going to buy school supplies and clothes and everything. I mean, I got child support, mm -hmm. but, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't even attempt to touch, you know, you right. have rent, like gas, food, right. um, gas for your car, things like that, insurance, you know, you right. don't think about these things mm -hmm. until it's like, oh, well, how am I going to do all this? Mm -hmm. How am I going to do it? Yes. And um, I reached out to the cancer um, foundation at that point mm -hmm. and they were real nice at the time they helped me up with a lot of things they hooked me up with um, some charities that helped me when I needed it um, very few but it was there when I needed it I, you know they would help me the best they could and um, I was grateful because I was like oh this is hard yeah. um, I have five brothers at the time that all pitched in and helped you know my family come together right. and they were my biggest supporters were were my brothers and my, my, my children. I was so sick one day, um, I couldn't raise my head mm. and my son's gonna kill me. Um, my daughter took him back in the room and kind of dressed him up. I had wigs at the mm. time and, and a wig and put her bra on him and kind of made him look like a girl. Uh -huh. And he come walking through there prancing and everything. <laughs> it was the cutest thing to make me laugh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'll never forget it. I mean, they were doing everything they could to keep me up That's and right. not to, you know, yeah. so that I would laugh that day and not cry. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing mm -hmm. that what they would do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's huge, right? It Having is. Having family, right? It and, is. And not feeling yes. like you're alone in this, mm -hmm. right? And, and we all know adults have their own issues and their, and their yeah. own bills that they have to pay. Yeah, mm -hmm. their problems, you know. And, but it's so important that you, like you said, your brothers, yeah, they, they, they all help too. They all help, yeah. you know, your children. They would bring food, cook dinners, you yeah. know, things like that. And yeah. it was great. Yeah. yeah. And I was grateful because I think if I had not had that, mm -hmm. I would have probably I would have survived, but I wouldn't have been as strong as I would have been, I don't think. And it's that extra strength it from is others. from others that, that, that gets you, you through it. There and I was go. just determined that my children were young, uh -huh. and I was not allowing this to take me out. Amen. I was not. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I was like, I'm bigger than you. That's right. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I have to have that attitude. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Got so, so tell me about you and Miss Brenda's connection. How did um, this relationship come about? On my second go around with my right. breast cancer, um, I had my daughter and my grandson, and you know they, we, we all lived together. And I was at the Dollar Tree, mm -hmm. and walking around, you know, just trying to get some snacks and stuff, yeah. just little stuff for the house. And um, I had seen Miss Brenda; she had walked past me, and it, the look, people stare because you know I have a bandana on. It's obvious that I don't have hair, mm -hmm. you know, and and people will look, mm -hmm. and. Um, I seen her, so I didn't say anything nothing about it. And then I kept shopping, and I got around, and she finally approached me. Mm -hmm. And she said, I've been where you have been. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. you know. Uh -huh. And she had asked if I'd had struggles, you know, what was going on, and what I had problems with, that she wanted to help me. And I'm like, okay, this, this is wild, you know, this stranger is willing to help me. And then mm -hmm. she told me who she was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. And she told me, she, I said, well, we're having trouble with food. Food was a big issue in the family because, you know, when you got people, you, you have to feed people. Exactly. 
and my daughter was doing what she could, you know, to pay the bills and everything. And I was like, okay. So um, she said, um, I have to go somewhere. This is my card. Call me in a couple of hours. Mm. So I called her. Mm -hmm. And she told me, she says, I want you to go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a $400 allotment. Wow. And I was like, just blown away. Wow. Wait. So blown away. This lady <laughs> met you. Said, I been where you are. Mm -hmm. What's your struggle? You said food. Food. And she's like, okay, call me in a few hours. Mm -hmm. You call her. And she gives you $400. Yes. I was like, I, I couldn't, I was like in awe. I was just wow. like, wow, this wow. is, this is amazing. Wow. I'm like, this never happens to me. <laughs> I'm wow. not that person, you know. Wow. Well, you were that day. I was that day. <laughs> I was, I was glad. I put it as God put me and her in the yeah. same spot at the same time. That's right. That's right. I, I'm a firm believer. That nothing happens by nothing. happening. No, it's oh, fate. I, I believe thing. in fate. Yeah. Nothing. It's fate that brings yes. you to where you have to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Because, you know, I could have went anywhere that day and, right. you know, never have seen her. That's right. We could have passed each other. That's right. That's right. And I was just like so amazed. I called everybody I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't telling them what had happened. And it was just, uh -huh. it was it was a blessing. Yes. Ms. Brenda, talk to me about that moment that you saw Ms. Gloria. I, I just, I saw her. Uh -huh. I was rushing off to someplace else uh -huh. and, and decided to run into a Dollar Tree. And I was all the way on the other side of town. And when you say happens, nothing happens by happenstance, nothing. Uh -huh because I'm in this particular Dollar Tree, and once I get in there, I'm like, oh, well, darn. Mm -hmm. And um, I pass by her, like she said. Mm -hmm. I pass by, and I'm looking like I normally do. I'm just looking, I try not to <laughs> let her see that I'm looking. <laughs> and I'm looking, I said, nope, not gonna say anything, I don't have time. And I walked away, mm -hmm. went down another aisle, and I said, <laughs> I'm good. No, I, I'm not going to go. And then finally I said, I'm, I got to go back and talk to this lady. I have to go back. Mm -hmm. And so I finally went up to her and I said, hi. <laughs> I said, how are you? Yeah. Just like she said, yeah, it happened. It was just, it was I said, how are you? She said, I'm, I'm okay. It's okay. Yeah. And I said, well, I think I've been where you are. Mm -hmm. And I said, tell me what's going on with your life. Uh -huh. I said, how can, you know, what are, like you said, what are your struggles? Are your struggles? Mm -hmm. and, um, and she told me what her struggle was. And that's what, what we're here for, right. is to help with the struggle. Right. Because we don't want anybody to have to fight this fight by themselves. Oh, that's yes. right. So it's hard. if we can help, mm -hmm. we want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Um, yeah. it's not about, um, you know, it's not about like show mm -hmm. or yeah. anything like mm -hmm. that. It's about what can we do? Yes. What can we do? Yeah to lighten your load. Yes. So to have to worry about groceries or have to worry about childcare, have to worry about a ride, that's too much mm -hmm. for somebody yeah. that's going it's, through treatment. It's extra, You're yes. tired, yes. you're struggling, yes. you don't feel good, mm -mm. you know? Yeah. You take your chemo three days later, you're a knockdown sick. Yep, you're you wiped out. You don't need to have to worry about those kind of things. Oh, yeah. So that's what we try to do. We provide a safe place to talk, a safe place to come in. If you want to lay down in the floor and kick yeah. and scream, come on, let's, <laughs> exactly. come on, Gloria, just let's go get the floor. Gonna do and it. Let's kick and scream yep. until you feel better. Yeah, it is. You know, you have to have you that have outlet. Have that. And, and, yeah. and and that's what Gertrude's house. That's what we do. Oh wow! And I was that's so grateful. I did not have. I had no prior knowledge that there was anything in Douglasville where I lived that would do that. I mean. I, you know, I look on the internet a little bit, but you don't, you don't see everything. Right. And I was wondering, you know, the cancer place I'd called, they were, you know, really out of funds. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's good. And called God around a couple of places you. and then here she and came that day. And it was just, it was a godsend. Wow. I keep telling her she's my angel. She no. will deny it every no. time. Yes. <laughs> no. so, so here's the thing. When we yeah. come back from this commercial break, I'm going to remind people of how important it is to be a part of a community. Okay. We're one Douglas. Yes. This is what this is we are. Bodies, mm -hmm. right? It is. Yes. Stay tuned. We will be right back after these messages.
Welcome back to District Dialogue. I'm Trinia Carthen, District 3 Commissioner and Vice Chair of the Board of Commissioners. And I am again today here celebrating Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it's October, and my special guests are Ms. Brenda Grissom of Gertrude's House and Ms. Gloria Hathcock, a breast cancer survivor. And previously, before we left, we were talking about the connection that Ms. Brenda and Ms. Gloria had together. Um, and because of that, right, we have Gertrude's house here in Douglas County. Um, and one of the things that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners is really pushing is one Douglas, right? Serving mm -hmm. our community and being one community, right? And mm -hmm. so we are just honored that you are here and that you've brought your nonprofit here to help the Glorias, yes. right, of, of the community. Talk to us about Gertrude's house and how we can help you support others. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Gertrude's House, like I said, we do, um, we help with everything. It's just, there's any need that you have as a survivor, we try to, we try to help with that need. Mm -hmm. And um, God has provided where we, we have not had, I don't think one person come that we weren't, we weren't able to help. Wow. So um, the way we raise money is uh, we're having a walk this Saturday, day after tomorrow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it will be at Stewart Middle School. We're starting at, uh, registration is from 7 to 8, and 8 o'clock we are going to start our opening ceremonies, and 9 o'clock we start our walk, mm -hmm. and we're inviting you to come on out and support this walk. It's $25 registration. You can go on GertrudesHouse.com to register. We also have an event coming in... Um, October, October 7th, Pink Pancake Brunch at New Mountaintop Baptist Church. We've joined with the chat team at New Mountaintop and the Pink Santa Hat Movement. And Pink Santa Hat Movement is also a breast cancer uh, support. So we've come together to do this Pink Pancake Brunch to raise money mm -hmm. for Gertrude's House and the Pink Santa Hats. Awesome. Chat is the um, health ministry at New Mountaintop and they have connected us with a breast surgeon that is going to be there that day talking about reconstruction and what that entails. Mm -hmm. So come on out to the Pink Pancake Brunch. Our last event um, to raise money is going to be our golf tournament with the Ball Strikers Next Level Golf Club. They, do a, a, they have done for five years a golf tournament for us and they take the proceeds of that money and they donate it to Gertrude's house. Wow. And that event is going to be, I believe it's October 14th. They haven't narrowed down the date yet, mm -hmm. but you can, once they do, you can go on Gertrude'sHouse.com. It'll be posted and also on the Ball Strikers um, website, Ball Strikers Golf Club. Oh. So that's how you can help us to help others, is to join in with us in the fight. Absolutely, join yes. in with you on the fight because mm -hmm. it is it right is a fight. It's a fight. and here's the thing i want people to know it's all of our fights it whether is. you are in it or know somebody else yeah there is a fight there always. is a fight, a fight. always always mm -hmm. every day somebody is diagnosed with breast cancer mm -hmm. yes a lot of somebody a lot of somebody's. a lot of somebody's mm -hmm. and they are our mothers our sisters our aunts, our cousins, our grandmothers, our mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. our baby sisters, you know, mm -hmm. our daughters. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we yeah. have to remember that. And it's not just women, it's men. Yes, it is. It's and men. It's, and it's not a death sentence. And it is not. No, it is not. It's not it a death sentence. Not. It's treatable. It is treatable. Mm -hmm. It is treatable. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we have two survivors sitting here with mm -hmm. us right now yes. lets us know it's possible. Yes. You can beat it. You can Diagnose beat it. Diagnosed at 24. Wow. Mm -hmm. Diagnosed at 24. Diagnosed at 33. Yeah. Yes. And it, it is. It's hitting the younger, yeah. the younger people because yeah. they don't think of it. They yeah. think it's after menopause that you get breast cancer, which is normal. You know, right. more people do, but right. it does hit the younger people. A Absolutely. lot of people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And without Gertrude's houses, you know, within a community, how would a lot of us be able to cope, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, all, all of the organizations that you just talked about, right, mm -hmm. are helping us to ensure mm -hmm. that we can support our community. Yes. Right? Yes. We're only yes. as strong as the community we live in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I know you, you talked a little bit about that it was, it was a family 
mm -hmm. DNA. For me, it was family DNA. But you talked a little bit about estrogen. Yes, right? um, about, you know, being aware, yeah. right, of, of what you eat. Of and, what you and, eat and what you do. Yeah. Um, it can hit any woman. It doesn't have to be DNA. Um, I've, you know, but the estrogen levels in your body mm -hmm. do play a part in it. Right. Um, some cancers, like mine, mm -hmm. was estrogen-based is what mm -hmm. they call it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what happened when I, I hit menopause or premenopausal, mm -hmm. my estrogen level shot up, which is what activated my cancer to come back this mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So be aware of what you eat, what you do, go to your, your gynecologist, yes. stay on top of everything. Yes. And um, they can check your estrogen for you. And if your levels are high, then you need to be a little more cautious about what's going on with your body absolutely because it can affect everything absolutely i'm having to take a medicine now that is suppressing my estrogen mm -hmm. that i have to take for seven years mm -hmm. so that it doesn't come back right because every time it comes back it's meaner it, it, mm. it's meaner and you have to get meaner yeah you do because <laughs> this yeah. one this time mom was more aggressive uh -huh. and she told me she said we got to fight harder that's right i'm like okay that's right we got it we got this that's yeah. right mm -hmm. that's right we yeah. got this we got this douglas got county this. we mm -hmm. got this yes. right that's why this is so important and and why you know we have um our breast cancer awareness kickoff here at the courthouse on October 2nd, Monday morning. So if you are available to join okay. us, please be here at 8.30. We're, we're gonna kick it off. We're going to, you know, cheer on our survivors and we're gonna memorialize and remember those who, I don't say they lost the fight, they just are in another realm to help us fight. Exactly. I, I really believe they give that, you that, right? That, they, yeah. I think we get the energy a lot from them absolutely. too. Absolutely. Because you think, okay, absolutely, you absolutely. Know, I have to do this for yeah. this person That's too. That's right. Like I, of mine, I said, I got to do this for my grandmother. I got to do this for my aunt. I've got to show them that hey, we we can beat this. Absolutely. So that you do, you get your strength from you from them people. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. So Miss Brenda, final parting words to to remind us of why again we need to support Gertrude's house and the pink hat movement and chat and all of those organizations mm -hmm. because without you and I know I met you right but without the Brenda Grissoms of the world right <laughs> this would all be for naught we would feel alone and we don't because of people like you because of organizations like yours and I just can't thank you enough for I think this is my third or fourth year being able to do this with you right and I, mm -hmm. I just so appreciate you being in Douglas County and doing this for the ladies and, and the men and the families, right? Because it's not just Miss Gloria, yeah. it's the family it's she the represents, families. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the community. So okay. again, your parting words for us. Um, I wanna shout out to Pink Santa Hat Movement. Yes. They are real instrumental in the, um, the teachers. Mm. They support teachers a whole lot. The wow. educators uh -huh. that are going through yes. the Pink Santa Hats, yes. okay? And then um, parting words for Gertrude's house, um, Commissioner Carthen always says, Brenda, Brenda, it's not about me. It's not. No. It's, it's not, not about me. But you're the can do it. You're, you're okay. the vessel through which it flows. <laughs> yes. So. It's not about me. Um, we're all on God's path. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this is, I guess, the path that he has for me. Yes. So with Gertrude's house, we want to do everything that we can to support the, the uh, survivor that's going through because we don't want you to fight alone. We want to be your battle buddy. That's what I we want to be. That. We yeah. want to be your battle buddy. Yes. So, yes. you know, we're just a sister away, yes. you know, and, and we want to be your battle buddy. So that's what I could say about Gertrude's house. I love it's, it. It's not love about it. Brenda. <laughs> it's about the team. We're all a part of the team yes. of Gertrude's, Gertrude's house. house. Yes. Okay. Yes. So someone that um, has done proactive mm -hmm. or thinking about it, uh -huh. I can say, hey, I got the person that, could, that you could talk to. Yes. It will be Commissioner Carthen. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can say the person is uh, struggling and going through and have their grandchildren and then they've, you know, gone through it twice. I got the perfect person. Let me team you up mm -hmm. with Gloria. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. we have those women that are part of our group that mm -hmm. a new person coming in, we can team up with. Yes. And that's yes. what we do. We're a team. We okay. work together. I love it. You know, so that we can that. support that person because it is scary Absolutely. when you hear that diagnosis. 
Yes, it is cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's scary. Yeah. Chemo is hard, yeah. but you can do it. You can get through it. Absolutely. Yes. Ladies, thank you for joining me. Thank oh. you for sharing your journey. Thank you for talking about your struggles. Thank you for talking about the resources and the opportunities right here in Douglas County. And I'm hopeful that as we celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month, that you will join us at one of these celebrations, that you will join us to help raise money and funds, and that you will get the information you need to have a safe and healthy journey. Whether you are diagnosed with breast cancer or whether you know somebody that is diagnosed with breast cancer, we are all our battle buddies. We are mm -hmm. all on the battlefield together, and we are one Douglas. Thank you for joining me on this edition of District Dialogue.